Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another this and that video. And for those of you who are new, my this and that videos are basically a more informative form of a blog post. I try to get out maybe once a week or so. And it's just showing you all the different things I have going on, help redirect you back to some older videos and to add a little more information and updates to other videos I've done and you'll see that going on here. So let's get started and talk about the things I want to show you today. So I have been talking a lot lately in videos about my mixed greens blend and I know some people are probably getting tired of hearing it. However, it's been on my mind more lately because with you know spring here and starting to get the garden going and I've just been so anxious and craving my greens a lot and I can hardly wait for my lettuces and all that stuff to be ready. And by the time you see this video, since I'm three weeks out of my video, I, you know, I might actually have a little bit of lettuce ready to harvest. I don't know. We'll see. But at any rate, I've been trying to find more ways to work the mixed greens into my daily diet. Now, if you've been following me for some time, you know that I use my mixed greens blend in just about everything I cook, you know, any kind of meal, even in meatloaves, meatballs, it, I add it into that, but it's also great for adding to soup. So let's say you're vegan, you don't have any meat stuff, throw it into any kind of casserole or soup or whatever you make, just to be able to get more of those greens in there. So if you're making a vegetable soup, and you know, maybe you just don't feel like you have enough in there, take a handful, a pinch, however much you want of this and add it into it. Now, one of the new things I've been trying, because um, though, you know, I'm Italian, I tend to really like pasta and anything Italian. Ever since I was a little girl, my favorite way to eat spaghetti has always been with butter and salt and maybe some Parmesan cheese. Well, one of my, one of my new favorite things to do, I don't really use Parmesan cheese that much, though I love it. Uh, I tend to use uh, nutritional yeast flakes as a replacement because I think they're far more healthy. And for those, you know, and I did used to be vegan and I learned to really like the nutritional flakes because of that. And so I've been using them ever since. That's one thing, even though I'm not vegan anymore, that sticks. So I'll put the nutritional yeast flakes on there and some salt, usually some red pepper or cayenne pepper. And now the new thing I've been doing is actually adding the uh, mixed greens blend, a pinch or two of that in with my spaghetti noodles and even, or if I'm just eating rice, I'll do the same thing with rice. And I'm really liking it. It does add a different flavor. It's kind of unique, but I, I'm loving it a lot. And, may, and I don't know, maybe it's because I'm craving those greens, which tells me I'm really needing the nutrients in them. And maybe that's why I'm liking it so much. But that's one way you can give it a try. You know, and even if you're vegan and you don't like the butter, we'll use coconut oil or avocado oil or whatever kind of plant-based fat that you like to put on there. I recommend some kind though, because you know, good healthy fats are good for you for one, and also will help your salt and your, and your greens to stick to that. So if you're new and you don't know what I got in here, well, it kind of changes every year, but this is everything that, that's in here comes from my garden. And it can be as unique as grape leaves and strawberry leaves. I dehydrate all this stuff up and powder it up, but more regular things you might think of like kale, red mustard, uh, anything green that is edible and nutritious goes in here. So that's also carrot tops, sting and nettle. Oh boy, the list is long. Anyway, I like I say, I talk about this a lot. I'll go ahead and link to the video right up here of my 2018 blend. This is actually 2017. Oh, dandelion leaves. Oh, I might always forget to mention the dandelion leaves because they're one of the biggest things in here. The dandelion leaves, the grape leaves, and the sting and nettle are the ones that typically are going to take up the most in there. But wow, lots of great minerals and nutrients in those in those greens. So any way I can get these into my diet, I would recommend even using this in a fruit smoothie or some kind of smoothie, green smoothie, whatever it is. What I forgot to mention another thing I've been doing and somebody had asked me about this and I've been trying it and, and so far really liking it is adding it to my herbal tea blends, uh, putting a little bit out of that, of that in there and I'm liking the flavor. I will say it adds a bit more of a savory type flavor, but I personally am really liking it. Again, it could simply be because I'm craving the greens because I know I need them and that might be why I'm enjoying it so much. But 
I'm going to try making tea just out of the greens and see what I think about that as well as making some other blends with it and experimenting and then I'll do some update videos on that down the road of some different recipes I've come up with and let you know uh, what you can try if you're tr if you're like me and wanting to get more of that good stuff in your diet. Okay, then the other thing I have going on is I'm, I'm going to be making some almond milk today. I'm making more than I usually do because these are some almonds from 2017 that I jarred up and I want to work through them because one thing I'm noticing about almonds, even when they're vacuum sealed, they just don't keep as well as other nuts, at least in my discoveries. Now the sliced ones I've never had issues with, but the whole ones for some reason I tend to have more of a problem with. So for those of you who are either vegan or just really like nut milks and you're still buying them from the store, I have quite a few videos on how to make your own nut milks and I'm going to link to my favorite one right here. That's the pecan cashew for a couple of reasons why it's my favorite, not just for flavor, but also because I like to take the pulp and turn it into a vegan cheese, which I also have a recipe on I'll link to right here. And anyway, Stop buying the nut milks from the store. You can make your own for healthier and cheaper, and it's actually really, really simple. So the next step with the almonds that I gotta do is I'm gonna drain off, I've, they've been soaking all night, you know, 24 hours. I'm gonna drain off the liquid, I'm gonna rinse them off, and then I'm going to add some water and uh, maybe a little bit of vanilla extract, I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna get some almond milk made today so I can use that. We can use that on putting on cereals, you can use it in baking, it's great stuff. And then the pulp of the almonds, I that stuff I like to dehydrate it up, the pulp that's remaining, and use it as a meal in, um, in various baked goods. It's a real good gluten-free option. You can powder it up fine and make it you know, a flour replacement. Um, typically, I like to use it in pancakes or crackers is another good option for the for the almond milk. So if you're gluten free, this is another option for you. Make your own nut milk, and then and then you can use the pulp for making your own almond flours. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is almonds are the only ones that I I think. Well, I do this with pecans too. They're the only ones where I strain the liquid off and then rinse them. I don't do that with like hemp seeds or cashews. It just, it just depends on the nut. Uh, some of them is best for health reasons to, to rinse them and then add more water. Usually what I do with like coconut, you know, cause I'll make coconut milk too. You know, I don't strain and rinse. I simply add it into the blender, add more lick water as is needed and then make my milk from that. So just some things to look into, but you can check out those, that video. And then if you want to do a search on my channel, you can find the one for hemp seed milk, you can find the one for coconut milk, you can find one for almond milk, that's an early one that was back before I started rinsing, you know, straining and rinsing the almonds, but still, you know, you can throw that, you could do that if you like. Uh, I just, the thing I don't like about straining and rinsing is I always think there must be lots of good nutrients in that water because you can see the color in there, but also if you're trying to get rid of the you're wanting to get rid of the non-digestible stuff as well. I forget what it's called, uh, phyta, uh, phytic acid. Phytic acid, I think, is what I'm thinking of. But anyway, and of course, that's the same thing you want to do with your beans. So that's what I have going on here. These are my runner beans. I grow three varieties of gr runner beans, but I just mix them all together. I can hardly wait to get them in the ground. I usually put them in the early May, like first of May. And then I can, you know, pick the young ones and save them up as green beans. I typically freeze them. This year I may consider canning some, uh, just depending on how much I gather up. But anyway, then I'll let the rest just finish out and then use as a dry bean. And these are really good in like a beans and cornbread, like a Tar Heel type meal, which is what I'm going to be doing with these today, because these have also been soaking for 24 hours or even making chili with, they're a pretty good size. So I'll be, with with these, I'll be rinsing them off and then adding some water, putting them in, a, in my pot. If you're new, we've got solar power and uh, this is a time of year we really start getting our solar power in and uh, I can, I start switching over and you know, and as the weather's getting warm enough that we don't have fires going in the house every day. So I'll be cooking on the hot plate connected to our solar power. So the, even though I've got the range here, it rarely ever gets used for anything. So I set the hot plate on top. I pull these out of stores, set them on top, and then just start running, doing stuff off, off of our solar power. This time of year, I'll go back and forth. We'll get some colder days again. We'll be building fires. I'll be cooking on the wood stove. And, uh, 
But anyway, I have to get this, hurry up and finish up this video so I can get these cooking for the beans and cornbread I'm making tonight. Now, typically I will do this uh, vegetarian style. I don't have any meat products and stuff when I do the beans and cornbread. Uh, I'll be putting my mixed greens blend in there as well. But tonight I'm gonna be doing something different and I'm going to be adding a jar of the bone broth I saved up from Thanksgiving and you know, the turkey bone broth to that. So you can see it's nice, it's pretty gelatinous. It looks really good. So I'll be adding that in there so we can get that good bone broth and you know, really good for the gut health. So if you're not a vegetarian, that's a really good thing to do. Uh, save up the bone broth, make your bone broth, learn all about it. I don't have any videos out on making bone broth myself, but my friend Mary over at Mary's Nest does have a know at least one. I'm gonna go ahead and link to her channel right up here. You can do a search on her channel. She's got some good videos on all kinds of stuff like that. So I recommend checking that out. Maybe one of these days I'll show you how I do bone, bone broth. So anyway, that's what I'll be doing tonight. I'll be adding that into the beans along with some more water and then cooking them or today because I got to get it as soon as this video is done. I'm going to get this stuff cooking. So right here I have the lip balm container holder that Mr. Rain made for me. So when I'm making a bunch of lip balms, I just stick the containers in there and this holds them upright and still. So when I fill them, I don't have to worry about them toppling over. Like I think maybe in my very, one of my really early videos I did on making lip balm, I, I had, I showed doing it, you know, setting it out on newspaper, but it was always that fear they were going to topple over. And I had that happen a couple times. Then Mr. Rain made me this and it's just, I love this thing. So I've got a couple of flavors on my store that I'm about out of. I'm totally out of lemon and I'm about, I'm running low on the orange clove. So I'm going to be making some more of those lip balms, hopefully today. That's the plan if all goes well. And so while I'm talking about that, Moving on to that, and one of the other things that sells really well on my store is my skin cream. Now, one of these days, I really need to reshoot that video with better lighting. But um, and I've been mentioned, I mentioned this in a lot of videos, but I'll link to the video on how you can make your own skin cream and my personal recipe. And anyway, I do sell these on my store. I have two varieties. The the base is the same. The essential oils I use in them are different. This one here is rose geranium vanilla. And what I do is I make my own. Uh, one of the things that goes into both the lip balms and the skin cream is my own infused, herb infused oil. And these are all herbs that I grow in my own garden and they're all organic. And what I'm going to be doing today is straining out my most recent, one of my mo more recent batches and with the new addition of the lavender from my garden. So now I've got five different herbs in there where before I only had four. Now I'm using the lavender, the marshmallow leaves, the rose petals, the pansies, and the calendula. All that in my skin cream, and that's what all this is here. These are all the herbs that I pulled out of my storage, all the ones I've dehydrated up, and I have jars of these, and more and more, more jars, because I save as many as I can. The pansies are the ones I get the least of, but I get tons of calendula, rose petals, marshmallow leaves and flowers, and the lavender. So. I decided to start adding the lavender in there because it's also very good for skin health. So anyway, that's what I'm hoping to get done today. Busy, busy day today though. So, and it's beautiful outside and I really want to get out there and get some more garden work done and we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, another thing I wanted to show you was we, uh, this last weekend, we went over to Olympia and cleaned out my mom's house well there's still a little bit more work to do but we're getting our house sold and uh if you're new my mom passed away in early january so we've been dealing with a lot of that and we need to get her house sold and and uh get that taken care of really hard going through her things and just having to get rid of stuff because most of us don't have use for all her things but you can't help but bring home some things that are rather precious and uh, i brought home some beautiful paintings you know and some of you know i brought home the painting that I did when I was, I think, 18 years old. I'll go ahead and show it right here. It's actually one of my, uh, I used to do a lot of painting and that kind of artsy stuff years ago, uh, but I just don't really do that anymore. But the Fox painting was always one of my favorites and my mom's. And so she's had it all these years. And so I was finally able to bring it home and, and hang it in my own house. And then another painting that we brought home was one that my aunt did of me when I was six years old and I'll show you that right here uh, my aunt is a very gifted artist as well she's uh, she sells a lot of her work 
But anyway, a couple of the other things I brought home were these beautiful music boxes. Now my mom was very much into anything that was Asian looking, any kind of Asian decor. I don't really wear much for jewelry, hardly ever. Uh, and I don't have any need for jewelry boxes. I just thought they were too beautiful to, to pass up. What I wanted to show you is that since I don't wear jewelry, I've decided to, or hardly ever, and I don't have a need for storage, I decided, it's gonna make music. Let me stop it here. I decided to use this one for holding the elastic I use in my in my patchwork skirts because I always put a little piece of elastic at the back and connect it to the drawstrings that I make. And then some of the extra pins that I don't ha already have in a pin cushion. And so I thought that would work really good and I can keep it next to my sewing machine and uh, it'll be both beautiful and useful. And then, you know, of course, remind me of my mom. And then the other one, uh, I don't actually haven't decided yet what I'm gonna use this for. Uh, I love the red. It's really looking, I, I'm right now just setting that out as decor in our rec room, because my rec room, ever since I had started teaching martial arts, I had converted, I kind of made the theme of the rec room. It used to be my dance room. Sometimes I still refer to it as that because that's what it was for 28 years. But I changed the theme from being more ballet oriented to just give it a basic Asian type theme like my mom would do. And so some of the stuff would goes really well. And now we're converting it into just a, you know, a game room, a conference room, a dining room, and it's also my sewing room. But I'll be doing updates on that. You're, we're getting closer and closer to having it done. It's been a long work in progress to get that, get that converted. But Eventually, we'll be doing a tour of that room when it's all done. I'm so excited. But anyway, so right now, this is just sitting out as decor. And the only thing I have in here is, is a picture of my mom when she was, I'm guessing she looks about 16 here. And then, um, 16 or 17. And then uh, she loved big, bright, beautiful jewelry. And I just thought that was pretty. Even though we had to get rid of most of her jewelry, I did want to keep one piece. And so I kept that. That, and then I have a hummingbird pin, a beautiful hummingbird pin that I kept, and um, I actually have it on my denim jacket that I wear all the time when we go anywhere. But anyway, so just a couple of be beautiful things. Um, I try to stay away from having too much knickknacks because it's just more stuff to dust, but you know, uh, these are just, they're beautiful. My mom loved them and you know, anyway, and I, as long as I can also make them useful, like. For the sewing stuff and I'll probably be putting more sewing type stuff in there too but you know before I just had the elastic just sitting in the little cardboard box that it came in and just pulling it out of there well this looks a lot nicer <laughs> this video is probably getting a little bit long but there's one more thing I wanted to mention before I close up now I did a video that by the time you're seeing this it's been three weeks well it just published today on my favorite oils now the oils were more talking about plant-based oils so people were wondering a lot of people wondering why i didn't mention things like lard and duck fat and different things like that well partly because i simply wasn't thinking it i was focused more on the on the oils that i typically use and i don't typically use animal fats for cooking and especially not lard i'll hope to do another video down the road on the on animal fats and what i do use and why i don't use certain others but anyway, uh, one of the things I definitely wanted to mention is someone threw out Crisco as a recommendation. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think to mention this in the video as a, as a absolutely stay away from oil or fat, but I'm saying don't, don't use Crisco. It's right as far as it being a bad fat or oil to cook with, it's right up there with margarine and soy oil and vegetable oil, which it is a vegetable oil quote unquote, but you know, it, it is not, I used to use it all the time. It was great for making pie crust, but not anymore. I don't use it. I stopped using it years ago when I learned about it. So stay away from Crisco. I had to throw that in there because I don't know when I'm going to be moving on to the other cooking fats that's going to be more related to animal fats. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my this and that video for today. I got to get some beans cooking and then hopefully get outside and get a little work done out there. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.